Good morning everyone, time for another update. So let's start out with the Discord channel for BitTube. I'll put the link in the description below. Make sure that you're always on BitTube's Discord app. You can see it's discordapp.com, but I stay on the general channel. There's a lot of channels here. The developers are very active, including Saber. So uh, you you want to be on there for the latest information. Also, there's a lot of people on there, including myself, talking about trading. So um, make sure you get on there. It's always exciting. Now, I wanted to talk today about the many reasons why Google must die. And I've, you know, I've talked before about this organization that is uh, purely evil kind of ironic because don't be evil was their little moniker for a while there which by the way they've gotten rid of but this is the Goliath that, that David must bring down their Goliath we are David and Google must die the reason why is because they are a monolithic uh, media company now there's others that need to go down no question but this is the one that we need to bring down first. Now, I'm going to play a number of videos here to try to explain why I say this. And uh, hopefully you can get it from the videos. But I'm going to talk about why we need to destroy Google and how we can destroy Google and uh, what their revenues are based on and the shady types of things they do to continue those revenues and how we can eat into them. Uh, there's a number of angles we can use to attack them. So before we get into the heart of this video, let's take a look at the tube chart and do a little bit of technical analysis. Now you know we had an announcement on uh, Friday we, uh, about uh, just the general update, but we got some information, a little bit more information about a partnership that BitTube is launching with, I think it's a German bank, but uh, we know that, that the BitTube team is interested in uh, having a payment gateway. Uh, we also got some information about a uh, browser-based uh, um, extension and just the general idea of extending the airtime model into website monetization. Now, I told you before that I ran not only did I run my YouTube channels, which was a silver channel and a, and a Bitcoin channel, but I also ran uh, sister blogs to those. So I ran uh, a silver, silver for the people, brotherjohnf.com, which was a pretty successful site. At one point, I think we were employing up to 10 employees, uh, just posting content that I wanted shown there. We were using Google AdSense. And so we were uh, running two blogs and two YouTube channels, and I was putting my content out on both of them. Not a lot of article writing, although I did write a number of articles, uh, but mainly just doing videos because it's an easier format to communicate. It's, it's uh, much more efficient to just talk into a microphone than to write. So both of those were relatively successful, but because of the censorship from Google and because of uh, their AdWords model, and I don't have time to go into the incredible machinations of AdSense and AdWords and what they use and the SEO models and all that stuff that is on uh, the websites as well as YouTube. But fortunately, we have products now coming out like BitTube and I'm going to share with you some others that uh, are going to really uh, attack uh, the tentacles of Google. But uh, back to the chart here. So we had that announcement on Friday that the more partnerships are coming on the financial side for BitTube and that this browser extension, which is very important, it's an attempt to uh, extend the airtime model to websites 
And like I said, when I was running a website, I only had Google AdSense and AdWords. That was the only thing I could use. I experimented with everything under the sun, including uh, all the different click uh, sites. And um, now they may have improved since then. It's been quite a while. But uh, when I worked with them, there was no real way to uh, make any kind of income based on your traffic. And we had significant traffic. At one point, I think we were ranked as high as in the top 30,000 on a Lexus search. So at one point, I think it was my site and maybe it was SGT Report and Silver Doctors kind of neck and neck uh, for traffic. And that was on the Silver Blog. On the Bitcoin channel, initially it was very, very high relevant because nobody was in that space. But again, the only source of revenue was Google AdSense and they did a tremendous number on us because we weren't saying what they wanted to hear. Now I'm gonna show you later in a couple of these videos that yes, there is censorship and shadow banning that does go on. They are definitely looking at the content of your videos and they are censoring information. There's no question. These people, Google is pure evil and they must die. They must be destroyed. Fortunately, I think we have a president who understands that. It's pretty clear when he talks about the media, the fake media, that he's talking about these big Silicon Valley uh, criminal scumbag organizations like Google. So there, I think that you know we have some friends in high places, but it doesn't matter because we're going to use decentralized cryptocurrency-based media to take these people out. So let's uh, let's finish up with the technicals here. Um, uh, BitTube made a challenge at that 1500 level. It didn't quite touch it. Uh, with the news here, you can see the old high back here at 1482 now again this information is pulled from bitrex but trade ogre which are the two major exchanges is pretty close so when we had that monero uh, issue i did a video about it it's called monero scare you can watch that it's on the bitcoin channel uh on bittube uh, we we got real close to that 1500 price. We were about to take out 1500 Satoshis and then that issue happened with Monero. So we sold off from there all the way down to almost to a thousand and uh, started to recover. I was buying all the way through here. There were some tremendous deals on Trade Ogre, uh, which was trading about 100 Satoshis lower than Bittrex. But then we slowly built up and we got up to this announcement. Now you know the famous saying, uh, buy the rumor, sell the news. So we got there to challenging it on Friday about 1450 Satoshis and now we're selling off. So what is the technical picture? Well, of course, I think the techni technical picture is very bullish, but that's mainly based on the fundamentals. Technically, uh, just strictly on the technicals, not on the fundamentals, uh, you'd have to say that it's still a bullish picture. Uh, we're just trying to get above that area. I pointed out the technically the 1500 to 1600 level is very very important because that's where most of the overhead resistance lies um, i'm not going to go deeply into it i've talked about it before overhead resistance is a point on the chart where previous buyers uh, are waiting to sell they're waiting above the market now, why is that so important it's so important because people who made a bad decision like see these red candlesticks the volume that came in on these red candlesticks, these were buyers, these were new buyers, these were people saying, oh, two, wow, that's gonna be great, incredible. And as they bought the coin, it just continued to fall right into the face that they're buying. It fell and fell and fell and fell. So there are a lot of people who started buying right here. I'm one of them. I started buying at three cents or roughly 500 Satoshi. I was buying all the way through here and this is when I started to release videos in August promoting BitTube because I saw its potential. Fortunately for me, whether it was a matter of luck or whether it was a matter of um, other things, just maybe uh, uh, being involved with everybody at the same time, finding something great and promoting it, happened to be at the time that this bottom was formed. So we're all carrying this coin from decent prices. Uh, we don't intend to sell, but there are a lot of people up above us who may sell. 
and that also includes the mining pressure of people who are constantly mining the coin. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and kick off uh, the updates coming in from Discord. Uh, but so that overhead resistance of people who who bought the coin and now aren't sure because it just continued to drop after they bought it, those people present overhead resistance. Those are the people. It's just in human nature for people to make a mistake and then want to get back even and then get out. Why that is, I can't tell you because it, it should be just as uh, normal for a person to say, well, I was wrong then, but it's back to the price I bought at. Maybe I'm right now. Maybe I should hold on. But that's just not the way it works. So uh, when we get back up to prices where people have purchased at a higher price than where we are right now, those people present selling pressure that's above us. And they tend to try to get out even. And when we get to those new prices, they sell into them. So that creates overhead resistance that needs to be worked through. As I said, the significant overhead resistance is sitting around the 1500, 1600 mark. There really isn't any other significant overhead resistance until we get to about 1800 Satoshis. And then once we get above 1800 Satoshis, you can see that it's just a continuous series of dropping candles. That's not that many days that it traded at that price. So the more days that uh, the coin or stock or whatever th you're investing in has traded at a particular price, the stronger the resistance is at those levels and the stronger the support. So that's why 1500, 1800 and then of course we're looking at about, you can't go by this chart, it's not completely accurate, but we're looking at roughly uh, 4,000 Satoshis. It's somewhere up in here uh, where basically the coin came out. Uh, and that's going to be new highs. So once we get into that 4,000 Satoshi range, which I'm, I think it's around 30 cents, uh, if you're talking about cents in two value in cents, uh, then that's going to be new highs. And as I pointed out before, new highs, as Jesse Livermore always said, if you're not familiar with him, read Reminiscences of a Stock Operator, the life story of Jesse Livermore. The most bullish situation for any asset is a bull market into new highs. And the reason why is what I just explained before, overhead resistance. When an asset is going into new high prices, there is literally not a person alive who owns that asset who's at a loss. Everyone who owns the asset is winning. And like Donald Trump says, get used to winning because that's the way it is when something's going up. You just keep winning. So people keep buying more, price keeps going up, nobody's at a loss. So that's what we're looking for long term is to get into a new all-time high for the coin. That's actually going to be the beginning of the bull market. And I think I'm going to stick by my prediction. I think we'll see $3, a $3 uh, fiat price. Uh, I don't know what that converts to in Satoshi's. But a $3 fiat price on TubeCoin by the end of this year. That's what I think we're going to see. I may be wrong. Uh, I'm not making a hard and fast prediction, but that's my best guesstimate. So obviously at the prices we're at right now, it's cheap to get in. So a quick uh, review of the bid ask spread. You can see on Trade Ogre, we're bid at 1318 Satoshi and we're asking 1344. Fairly wide, uh, not super wide, not anything to really arbitrage unless there's a big difference over on Bittrex. We're going to go there in a second. You can see about 800,000 tube offered on Trade Satoshi, or uh, I'm sorry, Trade Ogre. Uh, that's a little bit higher than we've seen, but that's not a whole lot of coins. Uh, we've got a, almost two Bitcoins on the bid. That's definitely more than we've seen uh, because in the past we've only seen about 0.6. So more interest is coming in. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see if more coins and more interest come in onto Trade Ogre. It's a good place to pick up some cheap coins. Now on Bittrex, on the other hand, we have a 1343 by a 1348, so a bit of a tighter range, but still in the same sort of area. I wanted to jump back to the chart here because uh, real briefly, uh, people are going to ask how far is this correction going to go down. Just on a technical basis, uh, I think that you're going to want to keep an eye on a couple levels here. Uh, one level you're going to want to keep an eye on here is this 1250 to 1300 level. We've seen this type of pattern before. We saw this pattern back down in here. Sorry, I got a continuation here. So 
uh, I can't continue. I'll have to refresh. But we had a pattern here back when we traded around six six hundred satoshis, and it was a correction back to about seven hundred. So um, twelve hundred satoshis probably will be the low of this move if we get back there. Uh, I would say between twelve and thirteen hundred satoshis. Definitely, I'm going to be a buyer. I am waiting for a little bit lower prices here. I did buy expecting a breakout, but I didn't use a lot of powder on that. I'm saving most of my dry powder that's left for prices between 12 and 1300 Satoshis. So let's get on to the main, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to go ahead and cover the the number here of uh, coins on the bid ask. So we're about at 14 Bitcoins bid. Uh, you can see that we've got about 4 million tube on the ask. So that's uh, quite a few more Bitcoins than we normally have. A little bit more too, but really we've hovered between three and four million the whole time that I've been following it. Uh, looking at the uh, depth, you can see the market depth. Uh, a lot of interest in TubeCoin. Uh, we've got about two, two Bitcoins worth bid uh, at 1,300, and we've got about three Bitcoins bid at about 1,200. Uh, the ask, there's not a lot of coins available till we get up to about that 1400 price. Roughly around 1400, we got about two bitcoins uh, sitting there on the ask, which amounts to about 163,000 tube coins at those prices. So that may seem like a lot, but that's not a lot. I've seen uh, two bitcoins be, be purchased in a single click, two bitcoins worth of tube coins. So Pretty bullish on the depth chart, not as bullish as it was Friday when the news came out, so we're, we're backing and filling, but don't be surprised if we get an explosion to the upside. So let's get to the meat of the story here. Sorry that took so long. Uh, I want to start off with a video by Black Pigeon Speaks. Uh, he is a alt media guy who's over on YouTube. You can see he's got 396,000 subs. Uh, I don't know how many millions of views he's got. He's He's done some interesting MGTOW red pill sort of videos, which uh, are, are, are those sorts of categories now are getting banned on Reddit. Um, we're not talking about Reddit today. We're talking about Google. We'll, we'll go after Reddit at some other time. But um, uh, Black Pigeon Speaks does a good job here in this video called De-Googleify Yourself. So I'm just going to play almost the entire video, and uh, then I'm going to comment more about a strategy uh, to implement further than what he talks about. It's time to say goodbye to Google, at least for me. While I will continue to use a Gmail address in a business context for now, and will continue to upload videos to YouTube until the Orwellian platform either goes bust or just kicks everyone off that disagrees with their Marxist madness. I've had enough of this company whose motto is, ironically, do no evil. Google is everywhere and it gathers information on everyone to power its massive advertising arm. Google is tracking you around the internet and building an individual advertising profile on you. And because if you're not paying for the service, the product is you. And Google has a history of abusing users' trust. In 2010, Google launched a social networking tool called Buzz that automatically listed people as followers of people with whom they frequently emailed or chatted with on Gmail. Google was also caught bypassing the privacy settings of the Safari browser used by millions of iPhone and other Apple users by using a special computer code to trick their browsers into allowing Google tracking Google later paid a $22.5 million fine related to this violation. Google is also an ideological, totalitarian, Orwellian company that should be avoided by those that value dissenting thought and free speech. While in its offices, it sacks those with views, which might well be based on science, but hurt the ideological feelings of those that populate the company. And at the same time, over at YouTube, it shadow bans, blacklists, and demonetizes, while at the same time deep platforming, anyone that is ideologically opposed to corporate controlled globalism. This is truly a disgusting company. So how do you de-Googleize yourself? And before you say Firefox, it has already been compromised and has stated it will be teaming up 
with eBay founder Pierre Omidar, and that's right, George Soros, to fight quote-unquote fake news, and will, along with Google, attempt to help shape our Orwellian nightmare of the future truth arbiters. So I'm going to give you the browser I use, Brave. Brave is a free and open source, and it claims to block website trackers and remove intrusive internet advertisements. The browser also claims to improve online privacy by sharing less data with advertising customers. As of 2017, it's currently in beta testing for Windows, Mac, and Linux, and available as a stable release for iOS and Android. It's a nice looking fast browser and I'm more than happy to make the switch from Chrome. The tiny search engine called DuckDuckGo, that has a zero data retention policy. It doesn't store any of the information that is automatically transmitted by your computer, that being the IP address or other digital footprints. As a result, DuckDuckGo has no way to link your search queries to you. Now, this search engine, Quant, seems to be just as good as Google. The only drawbacks is that there seems to be no ability to give a time frame for your search, i.e. 24 hours or the last month, etc. But it claims to not employ user tracking and doesn't personalize search results in order to avoid trapping users in a filter bubble. The company claims that it makes money through commissions it receives when users visit websites like eBay and TripAdvisor from the search results. And this is the search engine that I use. ProtonMail uses client-side encryption to protect email content and user data before they are sent to ProtonMail servers, in contrast to other common email providers such as Google. So you have what is a secure email that's not being sifted through by the likes of Gmail. The only drawbacks is, as far as I can tell for the free service, is the 500 megabyte storage and 150 messages per day. But if used strictly for personal communications, I can't imagine what more one individual would need. Well, YouTube is the one arm of Google that's becoming an ideological echo chamber and is truly an expression of Google's desire to try and control the freedom of speech and the range of opinions people are allowed to have. It really has already begun, as it's blacklisting channels for wrong think, a video I will be making shortly, but there are alternatives. While none of the following have the reach or the library of YouTube in terms of videos, I think it will change soon. There is several companies, I'll just run through them fast. There's the French Daily Motion, Vid.me, BitChute, as well as Minds, which acts as a kind of bridge between YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. And speaking of Facebook, I think that this is another one of these monolithic companies that should be avoided at all costs. I personally have stayed away from posting any personal information on that platform, and I think you should too. I use it only in the capacity of Black Pigeon Speaks, actually. And as stated, a substitute, while admittedly still kind of clunky, there is Minds, but there's also the new platform Gab. And speaking of social media platforms, while we're at it, the popular Facebook-owned cell phone app WhatsApp can be replaced with the much more rich in functions and user interface Line, which is its Asian equivalent. I no longer use WhatsApp for the very reason that it is owned by Facebook, but I can't tell you how much better Line is and it's not affiliated with any of these large monolithic companies. So hopefully this will give you some direction on where to go and how to finally leave Google, a company that has come to symbolize the worst excesses of corporate malfeasance while at the same time trying to control what is and what is not allowed in the marketplace of ideas. Obviously, I haven't covered all of the alternatives, so please leave your suggestions in the comments section below. And hopefully... So that's Black Pigeon Speaks. Uh, pretty good summary. Now, we know that Sabre and the team have already taken care of the YouTube part. Uh, BitTube is going to destroy YouTube. I've said that many times. But the big issue is uh, what is the source of Google's revenues and how can we go after them? Uh, we need to go after Google in sort of a pincer move uh, coming at Google from all directions, everything they do to make their revenues. So uh, before I get to that, I wanted to cover this 
interview with one of the BitTube developers. This is on uh, Crypto Ramble. Hi everybody, welcome to my channel, Crypto Ramble. My name is Desiree. I am speaking. And this is Desiree. So if you get a chance, uh, watch this video, watch it on BitTube. Uh, I'll put the link below. Uh, she does, I don't think she has her BitTube channel set up yet because it, it links through YouTube, but you can still watch it on BitTube. Now here's one of her channels here. Uh, she got involved in criticizing Black Lives Matter and she did an interview with a Japanese fellow who uh, discussed some topics you're not allowed to discuss on YouTube. And uh, this video, Hi, she talks I'm about... pretty upset. As some of you already know, my name is Desiree. I am the host of the channel Just Thinking Out Loud. I'm going to summarize for you. She talks about shadow banning on YouTube. Now, I told you before that I left the YouTube platform pretty much as dead back in 2013 and moved to my own member site. I was being shadow banned. I'm shadow banned to this day. If you don't understand what that is, you can watch this video. Essentially, what they do is, my understanding is, don't quote me on this, but my understanding is through the use of cookies on your computer, YouTube makes it so that your comments appear like they're on the video. So if someone says, hey, Brother John F., uh, loved your video. Uh, where can I get more? Oh, well, and I reply, well, you can check out my channel here. You can go there. Now, when I look and say, oh, yeah, okay, I answered that guy. Okay. Uh, I can see that I replied to a comment because it shows for me. But if I log out of my YouTube and come in and look at that video from another uh, login, or if I just don't come from any login and just come from general without being logged in, my comment doesn't appear. So she goes through that and it's shadow banning and YouTube has been doing it for a very long time. Uh, it's a form of gaslighting. It's such an evil thing that I'm surprised that a person would even think of something so evil. But basically what they're doing, they're gaslighting you and they're making you think that you're having a conversation with people when you're really only having a conversation with yourself. That's just one example of the evil these people are capable of. So yeah, they need to be destroyed. Uh, Google needs to die. Uh, but fortunately, uh, we have people coming after them. And BitTube is one of the first ones coming after YouTube. But we need to talk about how Google makes its revenues. So I'm going to play one more video here for you, which is from a search engine called PreSearch. Now, it's certainly not one that I endorse. And uh, uh, it's just one that I found, but the idea is to come after search. And I'll play this briefly. So that's pre-search, and like I said, I don't endorse that particular coin. Uh, you can look it up here, and the other one I wanted to cover real quick, when we're talking about it, is uh, BAT token, it's BAT, and this is the uh, coin that's behind Brave Browser. Now I know there's been a little bit of back and forth between the BAT team and Bit2, which is, my opinion, healthy. Uh, but these are the guys behind the Brave Browser. Uh, you can see that the coin is uh, got a market cap of quarter billion dollars. That's pretty amazing. Um, not nearly as impressed with this team as I am impressed with the Tube team. But again, this is a, a group of people coming after the browser market. So let's let's outline these key areas here. 
because we need to understand, uh, in fact, you can probably just uh, type in, how does Google make their money? And uh, we're gonna find out that the way that Google makes its money is, quoting their CEO right here, we generate revenue primarily by delivering relevant cost-effective online advertising. So it's through advertising and it's through the use of their search engine and their browser and their app store. Okay, remember when he talked about WhatsApp and uh, YouTube. These are the four keys to Google's revenues. This is the way we're going to destroy Google. So what we need are a true decentralized peer-to-peer -peer cryptocurrency based browser. Is Brave that? I don't know. I hope so. Do more investigating. If not, someone needs to do it. Maybe BitTube will. Secondly, we need a crypto based decentralized peer-to-peer -peer search engine with a coin built in. Is BitTube coming after that? I don't know. Uh, they're doing that uh, extension. Maybe they're thinking about it. That's a lot to chew. <laughs> but this is an amazing team. Uh, the next thing is the apps, the app store. We know that BitTube had to file a lawsuit against Google for delisting them from the Play Store. Google controls Android operating system for your phone. That is huge. There needs to be a crypto-based iOS or uh, either iOS for Apple, which I don't know, they're hard to break into, or at least an Android-based uh, operating system for your phone that Google does not control, uh, that we don't have to get around little fixes to get apps onto our phone. That's gonna be a tougher one. I don't know that much about that. And then of course, YouTube. And that one, I believe, is already on the way and in the bag. So that's gonna be the way we're going to destroy Google. Google must die, and the way that Google is going to die is by attacking it based on its revenues, by attacking its browser and producing a replacement that's based on crypto by attacking its search engine and producing a search engine that's based on crypto, by attacking its store, its, its uh, cell phone uh, control of cell phone search and cell phone operating systems. And it needs to be an iOS or an operating system based on cryptocurrency, however that can be done. And of course, the last step is BitTube, which is already launched and running. And if you don't have some tube coins right now, you better get them because uh, they're gonna absolutely go to the moon. And we'll talk to you next time.